Hi guys, welcome to another episode of VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. Hey guys, uh, I'm here with Bryant Robinson. He is a local Honda enthusiast here in Phoenix. He uh, used to work for uh, Built by Notorious. You've done quite a few Hondas. Mm -hmm. We're over at his house, actually. We've got a new project Integra that's gonna get turbocharged and we're digging around looking for a transmission. And Bryant does transmission, so we're gonna have him take a look at it. But while we're here, let's take a look at some of his projects. All right, so Bryant, you've been building Hondas for how long now? Jeez, 10 years, 10 probably. Years. 10 plus years. Yeah, so uh, you have a lot of project cars actually here right now. Are they all yours or the customers or? There's a couple that are customers, just your real good friends, but okay. yeah, for the most part, they're all all, your all, <laughs> all ours. All right, very good. Hey, so uh, what's your favorite build going on right now? It's probably gotta be the, the cage car project we got going on. Come on over here, let's check this out. So, obviously, there are a few guys been doing these with, with Miatas, uh, Corvettes and stuff like that. Yep. What possessed you to do a Civic? Uh, it's actually an Integra. Okay. <laughs> um, Sorry, I couldn't tell. No. Uh, the headlights di didn't give it away. Yeah. <laughs> um, just watching, we're big into watching Roadkill, stuff like that. And the Roadkill did it with a Corvette originally. Um, and then we wanted to build one. Um, a buddy of mine had an, an Integra um, with a, a decent cage already in it. Um, we thought it would be a cool idea to just cut everything off around it and kind of, that's where it all started. Um, there's very little of that original cage left, but yeah, this, this is, doesn't look like something you normally see inside of a car. The, new, it's yeah. It's got quite a bit of uh, extra reinforcement up on top, and looks like it's uh, uh, made for, unfortunately, made for rolling. But uh, <laughs> not that you should ever do that. Yeah, it's it, it's definitely gonna be pretty fun. But yeah, the original car was a, was a 2000 Acura Integra um, that we just cut all the body panels off and then added everything to the outside of it, but. It's uh, it, it should be uh, pretty fun, pretty quick. I, I know it heads off it right now. Have you been driving it though? We did have a chance to, to drive around the block. Um, it's it's going to be pretty quick. Uh, it's got a, a pretty custom transmission in it. You know, it's not really going to be a, a high mile an hour car, but it'll definitely get there quick. Excellent, excellent. Are you going to be taking this on the road course or off roading or I mean the tires say road course. course. Uh, or autocross? Honestly, we built it for a bunch of different applications. Um, it really is, is built for a road road course and autocross. Um, we had, you know, talked about putting some, you know, big dirt tires on it or something. You know, maybe even some paddle tires. But just, you know, it's an all-around, you know, have fun, you know, beat on a car and, you know, pass around, let everybody drive and have fun. Paddle tires on front-wheel drive might be kind of interesting. You might have to put deflectors up there. If you do definitely, that. yeah. It'll, it'll definitely have to do something there. Yeah. Well, very cool. So, uh... One of the reasons I wanted to come over here is I want to check out your soul. So mm -hmm. let's go check that out. Okay? Yeah. So I'm torn as whether to say this swap has soul or this soul has a swap. I mean, <laughs> uh, kind of an interesting thing. What made you decide to put a K24 in a uh, Kia Soul? Well, uh, this is my wife's car. Okay. Uh, it's a 2011 Kia Soul. Uh, the car's paid off. You know, we don't have any car payments or anything like that. Um, and she wanted something faster. Um, we, we had toyed around with buying another car or something like that, but we just were trying to stay away from the payment. And Honda's is what I know. Um, looking at it um, randomly one day, we were doing an oil change on this and an oil change on my Acura TSX, and like oh, that kind of looks like it might fit. Everything's roughly in the you know somewhat the same area, and then you know one thing led to another, we, and here we are. Very good. Now you made your own mounts. I know. I know uh, you base the actual mounts off the Hasport stuff, but you made all your own brackets and everything like that. Uh, that's kind of a cool idea. Um, how, was there anything special that you had to do in order to get the swap done? I mean, obviously you had to make a power steering hose. You made the AC lines. Yeah, pretty much everything. Uh, surprisingly, it actually fits really well. Mm -hmm. um, it does have a, uh, an Acura RSX power steering line that we've retrofitted to the car. Um, Still on the factory radiator, the factory condenser, everything like that. Uh, we just built some uh, some factory uh, some uh, some AC lines for it. Um, probably the hardest thing um, would for this particular one was wiring. Um, sure. The, unlike everything else, unlike most Hondas, the engine harness does not unplug from this chassis. The engine harness is actually part of the chassis harness. Oh wow! So splitting everything apart and actually 
taking out the factory engine harness and then reincorporating the uh, we're currently on a uh, 0204 RSX harness. Okay. Um, incorporating all that into the car, trying to make sure everything functions. That's that was my biggest thing. I just I wanted a, a functioning car. I wanted everything to function correctly. So it does have, uh, like you're saying, power steering, air conditioning. Um, does have all the EVAP stuff is is currently working. Um, right now it's on a Honda K Pro, um, but we're currently messing around and, and toying with uh, the uh, the K tuner. Mm -hmm. So we're going to convert over to the 0506 K tuner. Um, and get it running on K tuner, but yeah, it's a uh, it's a fun little project. Um, the car originally uh, dynoed at 107 wheel horse, so we've definitely uh, probably at least doubled that. Very good, <laughs> excellent. Well, let's uh, one of the projects you've had uh, done for a while is your uh, J series uh, car. Let's go take a look at that real quick. Okay. Digging on this manifold here. <laughs> this is one of the first ones I've seen. I mean. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the yeah. So um, this is a J35. The block is a J32. Right. Oh, J32. Okay. Correct. It's a J32 block and heads, uh, J32 Type S, uh, and the rotating assembly, the uh, crank rods and pistons are a J37 out of a 2011 uh, MDX. Is the bore the same? The bore is not. It is one okay. millimeter. It goes from an 89 mil to a 90 mil. So you just had overboard. Correct. Board it one millimeter over. Other than that, it's it's pretty much um, you know the heads have definitely been punched open. Um, it's got springs and retainers and uh, and and custom ground cams in it. Mm -hmm. um, it it fell a little short of the power numbers that we were shooting for, but um, we think our, our intake manifold might be a little too big. But we're, we're definitely we've got a couple different options that we're going to mess around with with that. But it's interesting the plenum. The way it works, like on the on the factory one, there's slightly longer runners. Correct. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then of course they have air horns in there as well. This might actually be a better boost setup, I'm thinking. Yeah, that's that's so, what a lot of people are, are now saying. But yeah. You could just boost it. We uh, we do have an extra block. So <laughs> we've got a block, we've got some possibly some plans for, for turbo here, but hopefully some real, real high high power. So really cool. Now obviously it's built for road racing. Have you had it out on the track recently or I think the last time we had it on the track was maybe three or four months ago. Okay. We've uh, ran it into, we're having some fuel issues currently. We need to redo the, the fuel system. But. Okay. And what size tires are you running on this? Currently it's on a 17 by 10 in the front and a 17 by 9 in the back with a 275 NTO one in the front and a 255 NTO one in the rear. All right. So uh, take another quick look here. What are you back here? This is my wife's other, other toy. Uh, this is her, her track only car. Um, this was something that, uh, that we just recently picked up, I don't know, maybe you know, eight or nine months ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's a 2000 Honda Civic. Uh, it's got a B16 swap in it, 4.7 final, ITR LSD, just, you know, real simple all-motor setup, nothing too crazy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's fun. It's, uh, it's definitely a lot more. Uh, she was uh, road racing her Kia with the, you know, the, stock, the stock engine at the time, so going from that to this is is definitely a, was was a, a pretty big jump for her, but it's a it's a fun car. It's she definitely has a uh, has been having a lot of fun with it. Excellent, excellent. And last, this is a buddy of mine's project that uh, has kind of been ongoing. <laughs> uh, this thing's probably been here. We've been working on this thing on and off for I don't know a little over a year. Um, it's uh, just a simple simple single cam build, uh, pistons, rods. Um, should it, he calls it a simple street car, but it'll probably end up making 350, 400, something like that. But yeah, it's uh, you know built trans, mm -hmm. a pretty pretty simple setup. Should be a, a pretty quick, fun little little street car. Excellent. Well, very cool. All right. Well, uh, let's get uh, cracking on that transmission. Perfect. Yeah. Let's do that. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize about how dirty this thing is. <laughs> it's been actually sitting in a car for about four years out in the Tucson dust storms. Nice. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So we're not going to actually fully assemble it when we get done checking it out because we're going to clean the cases up real good. I can put it in my parts washer when it's part. Perfect. I can't put it in otherwise. But anyway, uh, so what we're going to do here real quick is we're going to go in and take a look at uh, the synchros on this transmission. Also look for any other problems that might be like chipped teeth or things of that nature. Uh, and uh, Brian, how many of these have you done, you think? Too many to count. I've definitely got... Look at this. I've got quite a bit of different gear sets here. <laughs> I, yeah. I've You've done a few. Definitely done quite a few. All right. Well, cool. I will get out of your way. Ah, you're good.
those are the detent balls. Those are actually for the shift forks. Uh, those are what kind of lock it to the end. Uh, take it, when the forks move up and down, it kind of locks them into their position so that they are aligned properly. There's actually a circlip in there that holds the trans, uh, holds the counter shaft in, um, in place. There we go. Well, it's definitely seen better days. Uh, it's actually been ran low on oil. You can see up here. A little bit burnt. How all this is really, really dry. So the question is, it could have a bad bearing. Or would, when they run dry, I mean, is that something that's, uh, what does it usually happen when it runs gets really dry? Uh, Excessive wear on the teeth? Unfortunately, fifth gear is the last uh, to get oiled in this particular shaft. Uh -huh. um, and it's normally what wears out the, what wears out first. Um, also, if you look down inside the actual case, the bearing is actually stuck in the case, yeah. which is also going to tell you that that particular bearing is bad. Okay. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, it didn't come off with it. Usually it's sitting on top of that. Correct, yeah. Got it. So it got hot. And yeah, it got stuck in there. All definitely right. Definitely got hot. Yeah. We'll go ahead and pull the gear set out, take a look at the gear set individually. Real quick, we'll look at the forks for any. Excessive amount of wear as you can see on this particular fork how it's dug into the actual the fork itself, right? Let me see if you can So like this particular side, it's nice and clean the pads are clean. There's no wear or anything Where if you look at this side, you can actually see that this fork in my opinion. This is junk. I would oh, not yeah. reuse this Take a look at one two First and second gear fork looks good. Third and fourth looks good, but unfortunately the fifth reverse fork does not look good at all. Mm -hmm. So taking a look at the actual, the gears themselves, we'll start at the bottom. Gear looks good. The synchro looks to be in okay condition. There's, there's enough gap in between the actual, the synchro and the gear itself um, for the synchro to, to correctly function. Um, jumping up here to second gear. The second is pretty worn. The actual gear itself really shouldn't have any issues with it. Again, you got some nice, uh, nice space in between the actual uh, the sinker and the gear. When a sinker does start to go bad, um, the sinker will actually lose all of this space. And once it does okay. lose that space, the sinker no longer will stop or slow down this gear. Um, allowing and, and assisting in this sleeve. It has like a cone right in there that it kind of gradually as it, as it engages it, it slows it down? Correct, All yeah. Right. So, so when the cone goes away, then it, that gap goes away. Correct, yeah, and that's, but other than that, everything else l looks pretty decent with this particular one. Again, just, you know, a good cleaning should, should take uh -huh. care of all this. Let's take a look at this shaft. This is probably our problem so you, you can definitely see it's it's definitely gotten hot. Nothing you probably couldn't clean up. There's some real nice wear on the actual shaft itself, but let's see if we can pull. All of your oiling holes are not clogged. Look, doesn't look like there's any mm -hmm. restrictions there. So it does look like it was actually just ran low on oil. We'll start with, um, this is third. On third that's to me is usually the one that gets the most abuse because people seem to let the clutch out before they get up over and uh, in again and it seems to me that's one that usually gets screwed up the worst yeah and this one definitely again coming back to, to looking at the actual the gap um, the gap is not uh, not as pronounced as you know as the, mm -hmm. the first and second this synchro is definitely pretty worn uh, I probably would change the synchro okay. uh, you know if you are trying to you know yeah Make it make, usable. <laughs> make a, a real nice usable transmission. But the gear itself is, is definitely a, a pretty decent gear. Yeah, because I've seen these actually no longer 
peaked on, they were off, set off to one side. Oh yeah, I mean? it, yeah, it's so, definitely definitely seen some pretty bad ones. This um, one, yeah, it doesn't look bad. Just a synchro little one. Yeah, jumping over to the uh, third and fourth hub and sleeve. The hub itself looks okay. There's you know a slight little bit of of, uh, of wear on the actual hub. The sleeve itself definitely has. Normally you want to, like Brian was saying, you want a nice crisp point here. Uh, these definitely are, are pretty rounded off. You can see on third and fourth gear. Mm -hmm. So that's slider. What do you call that? A sleeve? Yeah, this this is your hub part that, okay. that the actual sleeve, third okay. and fourth sleeve, rides onto. Got it. Jumping over to fourth. Looks like you do have some some nice nice gap there. It looks like the the synchro has you know does have somewhere, but it is definitely uh, definitely usable. Uh, and the gear itself is actually pretty clean. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as we start getting into to this, you can see it's a uh, discolored a little yeah, bit from the heat. Definitely start to get discolored. Looks like all the roller bearings and everything are still still salvageable. Just definitely wash them all up. Mm -hmm. Fifth gear, gear itself looks looks pretty clean. The synchro, the synchro, I would definitely change that synchro. The synchro's gotten pretty hot. Um, a lot of times you can look on the inside of the synchro as well, and and um, these you can see almost see these folded over. If right. you can compare it to compare it to a, a different synchro, you want a, you want a nice sharp in, uh, cone on the inside. So this is definitely, obviously, it comes with a, with all this this heat. It's definitely mm -hmm. worn out this synchro. Right. But uh, yeah, the re replace the synchro and the gear itself looks looks relatively good. It doesn't look uh, doesn't look too bad. And then mm -hmm. jumping over to the uh, fifth and reverse hub and sleeve, the hub itself again, you know, it's seen a ton of heat. Definitely has a uh, has some pretty good pretty good wear to it. Um, this sleeve in particular is really common for getting this groove right here. This groove gets worn into it mm -hmm. when it gets really, really hot. Uh, I would definitely, I would definitely change this out. Okay. Um, this is probably one of the the worst ones I've seen. So this is fifth oh gear itself. You can see how rounded off that is. It's um, just, if you, just crushed. Yeah. Actually. If you, you flip it over, reverse. This will obviously never never get used. But this is a this is what a, a nice clean brand new one looks like. It's a Nice point, nice crisp point. Versus if you compare that to something like this, you've it's definitely rounded off. Definitely will have issues, possibly you know hesitations going into gears, so, grinding stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so the fact that this was so worn is probably why our shift fork is so worn because he's probably just just jamming that thing to get it in gear. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, but other than that, everything just needs a, a real good cleaning more than anything. But and some few replacement parts. Yeah, a few replacement parts, and you, you should be good to go. Very good. Well, if you don't mind, let's just kind of group it back together and slap okay, it in yeah. there. And I'm gonna, uh, we'll get some parts ordered for it and, and get it rebuilt. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> anytime. A lot. Let me yeah. know when you get some parts. All right. Cool. Excellent. All right. See you guys next time. Uh, by the way, if you uh, want to get a hold of Bryant, you can get a hold of him through uh, Facebook. Uh, he's one of my friends, uh, Bryant Robinson, B-R-Y-A-N-T. 
and uh, maybe he'll build a transmission for you. Definitely. All right. Excellent. Cool. Thanks again. No See you problem. later. See ya. Well, that was a lot of fun going out to Bryant's and checking out some of his projects. I really like that cage car. In fact, I'd love to be out there whenever he drives it next time. So maybe we'll take a trip out and see how it does. Anyway, uh, we're going to rebuild this transmission. So we are going to go back and visit Bryant and have him help us rebuild the transmission. I thought he did an excellent job. Anyway, uh, for more VTech Academy, please subscribe by clicking on the little logo down here to the left. Also, click on the bell so you get notifications whenever we have a new video out. And if you'd like to support us, head on over to our website, vtech.academy or vtechacademy.com, and check out the sweet sweatshirts and t-shirts we have. Thanks for joining us.